This PC right here has come into the Tech Yes Studio and it is not working. Now, I don't really know the problem because the person said it's just not working at all. Like it doesn't boot up properly. And so I thought I would take you guys with us on a tour on what happens and what I do from start to finish to get a PC like this going from broke to fully operational again. And you may notice one thing already, and that is how dirty this PC is. So, and before I do anything with this, I'm going to get rid of at least the majority of all this dirt. There's even a spider web here, which is really nasty. You shouldn't have spider webs in your PC because maybe the insects can short out on some of the wires. But anyway, let's give this thing a hard blow and I might as well say job after it right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in description below. So now we've got the PC cleaned up. It is time to boot this thing up for the first time. And uh, let's have a listen here. So beep, 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 beep. Okay, so that's three short beep codes and one long beep code. So some motherboards will give you a readout like this. And then we go check out online what that is. However, it is a Lenovo motherboard. We can tell here with the proprietary motherboard adapter. And it looks like it is a fourth gen version of this Lenovo. So going on to the Lenovo website here and looking up these beep codes, it's uh, put out the most common errors here on the website, followed by what they mean. And so our problem, three short beep codes followed by one long beep, this is actually right up the top. So I'm guessing it's the most common problem with these Lenovo motherboards. And it says here, memory not detected and it says investigate the memory subsystem. So we're gonna get back to the PC right now and we're gonna change one memory stick at one time on each different slot. And what this is going to do is it's going to rule out faulty memory because it's extremely rare to have both your memory sticks go faulty at the same time. I mean, I have heard of it. I haven't seen it personally. I have heard of it on the Gold Coast here where someone sold a PC. This was a story that was going around. They sold a computer that just had faulty everything and they said it was untested. But um, besides that, I mean... You so what we're gonna do is quickly now, try that just very quickly, one stick at a time in different slots because we may have either a faulty memory slot or a faulty memory stick. And since we've got two memory sticks, trying out one in a different slot at a different time would tell us if we've got either a bad memory or of course it could be bad memory slots still. But be... So trying out each of these memory sticks on different slots here is still giving us the same problem. So what we're going to do right now after trying this is we're going to reseat the CPU in the slots and just clean out the motherboard pins and just sometimes that can fix the issue because believe it or not over time on these especially these older systems like this fourth gen Lenovo right here the memory pins on the motherboard they can uh, what's called micro bending they can bend down and if it's just those memory channel pins that aren't connecting properly that can cause I believe this issue on this PC. But let's, so let's tip this thing over, check out the CPU pins and see if that fixes the problem.
So we've now just cleaned out the CPU socket, cleaned out the memory slots as well, and we've used multi-purpose spray for this, which is my favorite general usage spray on computers, mainly because it cleans things up and it also is non-conductive, non-capacitive, so it won't damage anything, even if the electronics are switched on. But I mean, I wouldn't clean when your computer's switched on just for other obvious reasons. But this CPU here could be faulty, or now this motherboard could be faulty, I believe. But also perhaps the GPU is causing some issues too. So what we're gonna do right now is take out the GPU, isolate that from the system, and then just quickly try to turn it on, see if this beep code is still coming up just after we take out the GPU. But then after that, we'll have to uh, try a different CPU quickly. And then after that, worst case scenario, the motherboard's unfortunately faulty. <laughs> So we've now just changed over the CPU for an i5-4440 that we know works 100% fine. Since the CPU that we did pull out was an i7-4770, we do have to be careful that we're using the same first generation Haswell CPUs and not the refreshes because the BIOS may not have been updated to support the Haswell refresh CPUs. So that could be an issue, but we've avoided that by using a first generation i5-4440. And now after doing this, the PC is still giving out these same beep codes. So I do believe we have homed in on the problem here and it is the motherboard itself. It's just gone faulty over time and perhaps Lenovo need to update their website with this beep code and that is faulty motherboard needs to be replaced. But just for the sake of it, we are going to try a couple more things here. We'll try a different power supply, one that we know works 100%, and also we will try a different CMOS battery, as well as a new memory stick. Let's just give those three things a try before we pull out this motherboard and get to work changing it over for a replacement. So we've now given this computer a different everything. We've changed even a brand new memory stick of DDR3 just for keepsake, just for me knowing that everything else is okay, except the motherboard. And so we've nailed this one down to the motherboard has just gone faulty over time. And since it is a fourth gen Lenovo, it's not the greatest motherboard to begin with. And I'm sure it's seen a very long life judging by the amount of dust and buildup that was in this computer. Now, also I did try, besides that brand new memory stick, I tried a brand new CMOS battery and that didn't work either. So now we just got the last thing to do and that is essentially just change out this motherboard, clean this PC down and see if we can get it to work back to its original state.
And now after changing over the motherboard with a direct replacement, we have a PC that is fully operational. Well, at least it's operational and booting to the Windows login screen, which it wasn't previously doing with the busted motherboard. Now we are lucky we had a direct replacement here. And so that just slotted in. Everything was all the same, except I didn't realize on these Lenovo motherboards, there is an option in the BIOS to put on keyboard operation or keyboardless operation mode, which essentially then allows the PC to boot up without the system fan plugged in and without displaying that error message. So that's a little thing I learned out of just going into the BIOS here today and putting that on because it was beeping up when I turn the PC on and displaying an error message with the system fan error message. But now we're able to get past that and the person who gets this PC back, they should be absolutely over the moon with the fact that they got a PC working again, but it's also really clean and it's looking like it did when it was first built. So there we have it with the broken PC that came in, it ended up being a faulty motherboard. Now in terms of this motherboard right here, looking over it closely, I couldn't really see anything wrong with it in particular, except for the rear of the board. There was just these fingerprints that have imprinted so hard with some kind of, uh, I don't know what it is, like maybe pizza remnants on it or something similar. But when I see this, I kind of think, okay, how was this board handled in the past? Was it the person who built it or did someone, I guess, try to uh, take things out or change the case or something like that? And then they ended up uh, maybe damaging the motherboard. And so just the only odd thing I could really see was these kind of fingerprints that left these weird marks. Like when I tried really greasing up my hands even here after even putting multi-purpose spray on, my fingers, I, I just couldn't replicate these kinds of fingerprints on this board. So <laughs> I guess uh, building PCs and eating pizza at the same time, as much as I love eating pizza, I really don't think it's a good idea to build a PC at the same time. But when it comes down to fixing a broken PC, sometimes you can get away with just cleaning things up. And what we did here today, some of the steps we did earlier in the video before we changed the motherboard out, they can work as well, but sometimes, of course, the part can just be faulty, and no matter what you do, you just can't bring it back to life. And in that case, you just change it out. And in terms of repairing a motherboard like this, the time and effort versus the reward is definitely not going to be worth it, especially here in Australia. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think of this broken PC right here. And also, sorry for a bit of a hiatus. My son, he went back to Japan. We we're doing a bit of school shopping for him here. So pretty exciting stuff in the works. But I do look forward to giving you guys the content train, ramping that up again, and getting the Tech Yes videos out in your sub feed. And also, we've got the question of the day. And this comes from Contech ZB4GQ, and they ask, hey, yes, man, how about AliExpress CPU plus motherboard combo deals? Is it worth it? Please review if possible. Thank you. So I've actually been buying quite a few things off AliExpress, and I will be bringing some videos on that very soon. However, in terms of motherboard and CPU combos, do let us know in the comment section below what you would like me to check out and I can check that out, I can buy that stuff, bring it in and tell you if it's a good buy or if it's complete garbage. I usually find with AliExpress, there's kind of not much in the middle. It's either a good deal or it just is just absolute crap. And so you do definitely want to try the stuff out before, and that's I guess that's a good thing about Tech yes City here. I get to try it out for you guys, tell you if it's a complete waste of money or if it's a really amazing buy, which is, usually been my experience with AliExpress. Anyhow, guys, do let us know the combos you are most interested in, and I will check them out in the coming months. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.